how are you uh, guys processing all this information coming in and how are you making hey guys thanks for being back with this video today i'd like to talk about something a little bit of an observation that i have made lately and something that i wanted to incorporate in my next magazine and a story that i'm actually trying to work on a little bit and the one thing is that since i'm participating in, in multiple different water sports like i have never been in a sport like foiling where people talk so much about their gear and the internet is full about gear and shapes and, and everything in surfing you never hear people about talking their fins and how they're shaped and the flex and the rails off the board Pe people don't do that you don't get conversations in the parking lot about things like that you just don't and then you have in foiling everybody aspect ratios we're talking mass length mass positioning you google or, or go on youtube there's a video after video talking about foil shapes and pump glide ratios i mean it's a math science project and then i'm go winging and in winging uh, same kind of thing everybody talks about what's going on with the foils what's going on underneath the board but i have not found a lot of information on the internet or on YouTube in general about the wings in itself which prompted me to maybe look into this a little bit deeper because I'm kind of interested because a wing is a wing right a wing under the water like this or a wing vertically like that above the water the physicalities behind it are the same we have the same wing we have uh, like I printed these two things out those are gonna be graphs I'm gonna be using in my magazine coming up but nobody talks about oh the aspect ratio of my wing is more like this and it gives me more that uh, I have not seen a lot of videos where people talked about it I see some comparison videos where they compare a different wings wings and stuff but wing swings but nothing really where people go into well with this aspect ratio it's more good for this action and this aspect ratio uh, is more for that you, I mean like and the shapes you have wings that come like this but this the trailing edge here is straight or you have it straight over like in this for example it looks really boxy the wing but the trailing edge is at an angle there's some that go almost straight what's the difference in that what does it do then there's also this angle that I found out I see guys that sometimes don't inflate their ring all that much and then it creates a little bit of an angle like this and the wings are more kind of like that or like this straight and that is called a dihedral angle so this is the dihedral angle and in airplanes and there's only info information I could find is that it what it does is the airplane flies through the air like this if it gets into a roll now the airplane flies like this this side of the airplane now has more lift than this one and it will push the airline or the airplane back into its horizontal position um, what does that matter for ringing I am not a hundred percent sure I see some guys that deflate or actually that don't inflate their ring that hard like not that rigid and when they wing then it kind of creates it creates that dihedral angle and I could only assume that say if you have a full-on rigid wing you evidently I would assume that you get more power out of it and the more those things fall back the wings fall back like that the less power it gets evidently and then at some point I mean like in its extreme that a dihedral angle would be at zero or 180 whatever you want to call it and then you have zero power so at some point somewhere this thing there has to be some sort of a happy medium. then there's another thing of course what we know is the air flow is like this well the longer the air flows and touches is in touch with the wing the bigger the lift is like with airplanes you see the cargo planes with these massive thick wings uh, Hercules C-130 planes full-on thick wings lots of lift evidently they have a lot of payload and if you translate this from horizontal to vertical then a wing like this I would assume has more power but now what does it do if this, this at this angle or at this angle and and what is that angle even matter 
does it matter at the speeds that we're going with an airplane that goes six seven hundred miles an hour absolutely it matters everything matters but how much does it matter on a speed that we're going I don't know 25 to 35 miles an hour in wind speeds to 35 knots I really don't know I can it's hard to say one thing is for sure that the air will stick with the wing here much longer than over here so maybe it'll turn a little better like in this angle because the, the wing is not locked into the airflow I also went to quite a few um, wing brands website and try to find some things out about that and it's actually interesting how little information we have about those wing shapes and what they do we see a lot of graphs where they go like oh yeah well a three meter wing is sweet spot in the 25 to 30 knots of wind and so on but then they don't take the rider's weight under consideration well my daughter is 12 years old and guess what she can ride her 2.5 meter wing in 15 to 20 knots and for me that is a whole lot of work if I even consider using it so they use those nice little graphs with color with color uh, um, gradients and all of that but if you don't put the rider's weight into consideration what does that do me any good some other um, producers um, some other manufacturers they have a scale with the body weight but then again body weight plus wing size now what kind of a foil am I using it evidently makes completely a lot of sense say I'm like 75 kilos plus minus depending on my intake uh, and I can easily get going in a lighter wing day say like 10 to 15 knots on my 4-5 wing but I have an 1850 Armstrong from foil and that thing just goes up in anything right so now I put my body weight and the wing size into relation also with the front wing with what kind of foil setup am I using and I'm still lacking that information out there from all the brands well, of course let's say my daughter she's little if I gave her an 1850 and the four or five she'd be like it will be way too much so I can use a smaller ring with my same body size in higher wind and I can go down on my front foil wing so all those three things my body the wing size actually more than that the wing size the wind the strength of the wind and the setup of my foil they all tie together into one and I sure would love to see for somebody to come out somebody maybe smarter than I am to come up with some sort of a some sort of a graph like in, in what let's say me 75 kilos again what do I need to use what kind of wind speeds do I need and what, uh, how, what size of wing would I need in order to fly on a say a 1050 or a 900 wing which we see a lot of guys are like lately going on these super small wings is it just technique or where are the physicalities with this another thing um, that I just wanted to forgot to mention that we never see like the wingspan like I have not found one website or one producer that said like this is the wingspan that we have and evidently that wingspan that wingspan at some point is limited by physicalities because if you imagine you're only that tall and you're standing above water that much this wing cannot be as wide as you as uh, in, infinitely because at some point those tips as you're sailing along those tips will get into the water those tips will get into the water so you are kind of limited with wingspan you cannot make those wingspans too big so if you want to make a bigger wing you have to somehow pack the square meters into this into the width of the wing or, or or the cord actually pardon me the cord you'd have to pack those square meters into the cord therefore it becomes more powerful so wing physicists physicists wing physicists where are you help us out because the more I'm talking about it the more complicated and the more crazy it seems to get it's like the more you know the less you know I'd say the last word with this is not spoken and since everybody's nerding out on wings and foils right now I'm pretty sure somebody will somehow have an answer at some point 
And if you have an answer or your experience, then let us know. Uh, be engaged in the conversation. It'd be really interesting to see and read and hear on what is your guys' perfect setup. It's not just a board. That's a whole different story. We'll talk about boards in an upcoming video. I got some great ideas um, because that's another whole topic. But at the end of the day, once we're out of the water and flying, the size of board that I'm standing on actually it doesn't really matter anymore uh, all of that because it's just now it's just the, uh, the agility that I have so we'll keep an eye on that subject because I find it highly interesting and this is just a learning process for me and I'm wondering where are you guys with this how are you uh, guys processing all this information coming in and how are you making your purchase decision based on what you know or what guys are telling you what what, what are the, the manufacturers telling you Thank you very much for being part of this and yes we will talk more about that this is something that will come up in the next video it'll come up in another area in the next magazine video etc